Welcome to part two of our mold making tutorial showing how to make automotive restoration parts. In this video, we're going to show the process of making a rubber trim gasket that is critical to sealing the Isetta's ragtop. So get ready as BJB continues to take the mystery out of materials. In some cases, like part one of our tutorial video, it's easy to find a good part to remake using silicone molds and cast urethane. But in this case, finding a satisfactory part to take a mold of and reproduce was not possible. So the choice was made to produce a pattern from scratch by taking measurements and using 3D modeling to create the necessary geometry. A new pattern can then be handmade, 3D printed, or CNC machine, which is what was done in this case. The aluminum pattern was finished by bead blasting the surface to produce an accurate matte finish in which the silicone mold will copy and reproduce in the cast parts. Since this will be a one-piece open pour mold, the process for setup is much easier. We use a good quality double-sided tape to hold the pattern to the baseboard. Tape is applied all around the perimeter to ensure a good bond to the board and also prevent any gaps under the pattern where silicone could leak into. A sharp hobby knife is used to trim the tape flush to the pattern. The tape backing is peeled away and the pattern is turned over. We measure the perimeter gap to ensure the pattern is centered on the baseboard and press down firmly to ensure it's secure. The next order of business is to prepare the mold box walls. Some pieces of shelving board are cut to size and placed around the perimeter of the pattern, leaving a small gap to eventually create the mold flange. We double check our placement with a scale to ensure an even gap. When satisfied, we'll hot glue the mold box together. A bead is run around the vertical corners and base perimeter to prevent silicone from leaking out. Next, we need to figure out the volume of the mold box in order to know how much silicone to mix up. Length times width times height gives us a cubic volume and we can use the technical data sheet info to convert that to how much silicone is needed. Be sure the surfaces are clean and dust free before pouring the silicone. Now we're ready to mix up our mold silicone. If figuring out the math scares you, we cover this in detail in our intro to mold making tutorial, as well as a video on mixing ratios, so don't worry. The A side of our silicone is dispensed into our mixing container. The low viscosity B side is shaken prior to pouring to ensure a homogeneous blend. After the correct amount of B side is added to the A, we can begin mixing thoroughly with our mixing spatula. These reusable spatulas do a great job and are available on our website. As mentioned in our other mold tutorials, we use the double mix method of transferring the first mix into a new container to ensure streaks of unmixed silicone don't make it into the mold. The cost of an extra container is nothing compared to a ruined mold. Once the silicone is transferred, we give the batch another good mix. We then pull a vacuum on our mixture to extract the air bubbles. A mold filled with air bubbles weakens the strength of the rubber and increases the chance of imperfections. After several minutes in the vacuum chamber, we begin to carefully pour a steady stream of silicone, being careful not to create any unnecessary bubbles. The silicone flows across the surface, picking up incredible detail in the process. Notice, we didn't apply any mold release to these surfaces. The silicone won't stick to aluminum and smooth painted surfaces. We make sure the long mold is level and adjust as needed before the silicone cures. Once the silicone is cured, we begin the process of removing the mold walls. Isopropyl alcohol loosens the hot glue's grip and they pull off fairly easily. Any flashing from the silicone can be removed with a sharp hobby knife. A slight meniscus forms along the top edges, so it needs to be removed in order for the mold to lay flat. 100 grit sandpaper can knock it down, or you can slice it away with the hobby knife. We can begin slowly demolding the silicone from the pattern, ensuring nothing is locking it from underneath. Our silicone mold came out beautifully and captured the matte finish of our pattern in perfect detail. Before we cast our urethane rubber, a light coating of mold release is sprayed to help extend the mold life. Our Stoner E236 urethane release is a great choice for this application. Remember not to flood the surface or you will affect the finish of the cast part. After releasing the mold, Place it on a clean, level surface and use a long, straight piece of wood or ruler 
to ensure the mold is not curved or bent. We need our gasket to be fairly soft and flexible to replicate the original piece. We choose our F130 High Performance 30 Shore A system. This castable urethane exhibits good tear strength and heat resistance. Be careful to choose the right resin system for the job or you might find lower grade systems will deteriorate quickly in a harsh environment. We add BJB's black pigment to the B side to match the original color. We're also adding BJB's UV100 additive to help protect the rubber from occasional UV exposure. Soft rubbers are more prone to UV degradation, so adding a black pigment plus the UV additive will help. Once the additives are in, we pre-blend before adding the appropriate amount of side A. This saves us time versus trying to mix four different ingredients all at once and decreasing your work time. Note, we often clean the container lids after pouring to prevent sticky messes or stuck lids later down the road. Once you've measured out the A side, begin to mix vigorously and thoroughly. Again, we opt for the double mix method to reduce any chances of unmixed material ending up in our cast part. The mixture is then placed in our vacuum chamber. As mentioned in our first video, vacuum removes the air bubbles and pressure casting is not effective for flexible materials such as this. So vacuum is more practical to use when casting a variety of materials. Begin to pour the urethane in the mold, being careful not to induce any unwanted air bubbles. F-130 is a faster working time system, and with two-part thermosetting materials, more mixed material speeds up the gel time, so you need to work quickly. After the mold is filled, we allow the urethane to cure for a couple hours before demolding. And there we have it. Our silicone mold has reproduced a perfect replacement for the rubber gasket. The matte surface finish and the flexibility of the urethane works great in the application. Imagine the other things you could make with silicone molds and urethane casting. Be sure to check out other videos from BJB and subscribe to our channel to see the best mold making tutorials on YouTube. Like us on social media, leave any questions below, and thanks for watching.